Hey there everyone, how's it going? I am glad that I was able to present another Platinum run so quickly after the last one. The last time we did Leafeon, this time we're doing Glaceon. I thought it would be nice to put these two head to head because they're from the same generation. Now the next time I do this challenge, I'm going to be putting Espeon and Emreon against each other, but before I get started with Glaceon statistics, let me explain the rules of the challenge. 1. We cannot use any other Pokemon in battle aside from Glaceon. Now if we run into a doubles battle, there are some exceptions there. 2. We can catch Pokemon for HM moves. 3. No items in battle, so that means that we can't use any sort of healing items or X items because then that wouldn't really be a challenge, would it? And 4 hold items are acceptable. So Glaceon is very much like Leafeon in the sense that one of its stats is much higher than the other. It's got base 65 HP, 60 attack, 110 defense, 130 special attack, 95 special defense, and 65 speed. In other words, we can tank physical attacks, much like Leafeon, hit hard with special attacks, but we're too slow to go first, and we may not survive anything after the first hit because our HP is so low. Move-wise, we get access to Icy Wind at level 15, much like most evolutions getting access to a good move early on. But later on, we only learn physical moves, so we may need to rely on teaching it TM moves earlier than expected. The next time it learns a non-physical move is level 57, which is much, much too high and late in the story. It's not even a good move to learn. If only we could have a good hidden power type. It might just be a move that we use, but we do get access to Shadow Ball which may come in handy later on. We start our journey by using the Pokemon randomizer to give us Glaceon in place of Turtwig because our rival would then have Chimchar which would be the most difficult to go up against. I named Glaceon Glacia to follow our Japanese naming system. We have the Brave Nature which means our attack is boosted and our slow speed is hindered. Ability-wise, we have Snowcloak, which raises evasion in the Hellstorm. It's kind of situational, just like Leafeon's was. Stat-wise, you can tell how monstrous their special attack is. It's literally on par with the HP, which goes to show that it's truly monumental. So after we obtain the Pokédex and Poketch from Jubilife City, Route 203 is where we have our actual first rival battle. Here, you can truly see how bad our attack is. At level 8 and being a fully evolved Pokémon, it takes us several hits to even knock out the Starly. It doesn't help that he used Growl, but we take it out eventually. And by the time we get to Chimchar, we need to use Tail Whip a few times to even start landing damage against it. Even after a few, we still aren't landing much damage on the Chimchar. Nevertheless, we do make it faint, which means that we need to level up now for the battle against Rorik. Since we already know that our pitiful attack stat won't even put a dent against his Pokemon, we need to level up to level 15 where we can learn Icy Wind. It's base 55 power with a slight chance to miss, but it's better than nothing. It's a stab move that will make great use of our incredibly high special attack. At level 15, we attempt the battle. I shouldn't say attempt because it was more successful than anything. It goes smoothly, just like how it did with Leafeon. Icy Wind was super effective against Geodude and Onyx. When it comes to Cranidos, let's just say its special defense was terrible, so we one-shot all of them and the tape our first gym badge. After obtaining the badge, we return to Jubilab City, help Professor Rowan with some Galactic Thugs, we can enter into Floroma Town, and just on the outskirts, there's a little girl that needs our help with the Valley Windworks. We already know that Team Galactic took her dad hostage, so let's get straight to the battle here against Commander Mars. In the beginning against Zubat, it went pretty quickly. But when we get to the pure ugly, it's kind of a struggle because it's much faster than us. Luckily, our defense is outrageous, so we manage just fine. We helped the Valley Works employee and then traveled through the Eterna Forest to help Cheryl through. Now that we've gotten through to Eterna City, we can go up against Gardenia. She specializes in grass types, and grass types are incredibly weak against ice types. Gardenia sends out Turtwig first, and somehow we manage to outspeed given our atrocious speed stat and knock it out with an icy wind. Cherim comes second, and it manages to deal some damage, but it is also a one shot. Last is Roserade, and while it did manage to hit us to about a third HP, we slowed it down once and managed to outspeed it and knock it out with two Icy Winds to win us our second Gym Badge. Right about now, Glaceon is making excellent time. I remembered I had to teach Leafy on a couple of moves, but having this high of special attack and a move that makes other Pokemon slower is really coming in clutch right now. If we make our way to the Galactic Tower, we can fight against Commander Jupiter. Let me just say something real quick. I know I've said it before, but this room was really special to me because it just had a different atmosphere about it. Anyways, let's get to the battle. For whatever reason, it seems like they all have a Zubat, so you can pretty much tell where that went. But then comes out Skuntank, and this thing is pretty tanky. It hits us for some damage with Night Slash as our Icy One slows it down. 
On the following turn, we hit it again, but it survives and heals a little bit with a citrus berry and then poisons us with poison gas. Finally, on the third icy wind, we knock it out and win the battle. I didn't expect Skunting to be that bulky, and to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. When we obtained the bike, we made it all the way through the cycling road without really having to battle anyone and evaded everyone on the route just west of Mount Coronet. As soon as we arrived, we stopped the Baneri from leaving and then saw our mom at the contest hall. Surprisingly, this is where you find Fantina, the third gym leader. I never really understood why Fantina was the fifth gym leader in Diamond and Pearl. It just makes sense here. I have no idea why, but Fantina is the most difficult gym leader to go up against in a solo run like this. I don't have any difficulty with any of the other trainers except for her. I don't know if it's the fact that Miss Magius's well-rounded special attack, special defense, and speed have anything to do with it, but we almost always lose to her because of what happens. It doesn't help that we always get confused or burned and we never have enough HP for the battle. It took me 6 attempts in total and we went from level 25 to level 28. I do have to admit that I attempted this probably 3 times at level 28, but nevertheless we managed to win on this one. What helped was swapping out the Ross Berry for the Prison Berry to help against confusion since Miss Magius likes to spam that. We had a lot more HP left by the time we got to Haunter. Plus, thanks to the Citrus Berry, she never healed Miss Magius, which could have made it more difficult for us. That and Haunter missing Hypnosis and then being slower than us really helped us win. But hey, a win is a win, right? Obtaining the third gym badge means we can immediately fight Barry again. He sends out Staravia. Thankfully, the attack drop doesn't really matter. He goes for a double team, but that didn't help as we knocked it out with an icy win. He sends out Monferno next. We just learned Bite, so I wanted to see how well that would do, type difference aside, and we managed to get the flinch. And on the next couple of turns, instead of attacking, he just goes for Leer. He probably didn't see a potential to one-hit KO Glaceon or something. Third was Weasel. I didn't really see a point in using Icy Wind since it resisted, and even though our attack stat is pretty bad, we managed to knock it out in a few hits with Bite while only receiving a small amount of damage. And last was Roselia, who didn't stand the Snowball's chance, so we got our first try victory. Well, we made it to Velstone City. This gym was the death of me for various reasons. One, we're slow. Two, we don't really have a move that can deal good damage against Lucario. Three, we're weak against fighting type moves, let alone special fighting type moves. And four, did I mention that we're slow? On our first attempt at level 32, we get massacred. It wasn't just Metatite hitting us for half our health, we missed an important blizzard on the Machoke. And now that we're much slower thanks to Rock Tomb, he easily knocked us out. Either we're going to need some blizzards to hit, or I just need to get a new strategy overall, and great, I forgot to save. Anyway, let's get back up to speed. I attempted this gym 5 times in total. I got to level 33, which wasn't all that bad of a grind. I just needed RNG to be in my favor. So on turn 1, we get the blizzard to land and oh look, it's a knockout. And we leveled up. We need all the stats that we can get. We also make the Machoke faint in one hit, so that's even better. We're at full HP for Lucario, but that's when Lucario gets a critical hit force palm and drops us down to 1 HP. But it's not over because we slowed it down. Not only that, we landed a critical hit blizzard on the Lucario and somehow the impossible felt possible. We won the 4th gym badge. Ever since the defeat of Maylene, we moved on to Pastoria City where, lo and behold, we battle a rival again. This time his team was way better than before. But I am speaking loosely here. By way better, I mean that it's improved slightly. It's the same old same old at the beginning. Sorabia goes for a double team and we miss an Icy Wind? What? He switched out to Monferno. Okay, that's fine because we did a ton of damage with Blizzard and held on very well to a Flame Wheel, but we struck back and knocked it out. He then sends out Roselia. Don't know what he was thinking there, but we've successfully knocked out two of his Pokemon. Staravia comes out and starts boosting its evasiveness, and while it does help, he was only delaying the inevitable. And by the time Weasel comes around, it really can't do much to us, so we win on our first attempt. And with this victory, we can instantaneously jump to our next battle, which is against Leader Wake. While he does specialize in water types, two of his Pokemon are neutral against ice type moves, so that makes it a heck of a lot easier for us. Like I've mentioned before, when he sends out Gyarados, the Intimidate doesn't matter against Glaceon. Here you can see that I went for an Ice Shard, but that was only just in case it was a range. But we defeated Gyarados when Blizzard hit. Then he sends out Quagsire and it only lives long enough to get wiped out by another Blizzard. And when he sends out Floatzel, we use Icy Wind to lower its speed and to hopefully cover that little bit of HP that could have been left over if I just used Blizzard once. And it definitely worked out to our advantage because we won. That was a first try victory. And now we get to kind of run around and do some Team Galactic stuff like follow this dude that set the bomb off in the marsh all the way to Blake Valor. So maybe I'm a little naive, but why does he set that bomb off? 
Like, I've played the story multiple times, but never understood why. Does this just set up for when we enter Lake Valor? Or are those different explosions after the 6th gym? And let me know in the comments below. Once we get the medicine from Cynthia and apply it to the Psyduck, she asks us to meet with her granny in Celestic Town where we coincidentally run into Cyrus. He challenges us to a battle, and let me just say that it went a lot better than I could have expected. Well, it took me a lot less attempts than what I thought it would. So after 4 different attempts, I got this battle at level 40. While we did struggle a bit with the Sneasel, this just shows how difficult it is to use Glaceon when we're at a type disadvantage. You might have seen hidden power on my moveset, but I actually found that it's the worst possible type I could have gotten. It's Ice type! So I'm kind of at an impasse on moves available. And let me just say that I haven't planned these routes at all. I'll do that for the next set of videos that I make, but for now, you guys get to see me struggle with miss after miss and not having the right moves. And oh, I forgot that we survived on 1 HP again. <laughs> that was wild, but we won and we can finally move on to Candelave City. In Candelave City, we can make our way to the bridge that separates the town and this is where we run into our rival for the millionth time. So you might have seen that at level 40 we beat Cyrus, right? Well, you can basically run straight here from that point and jump into the rival battle. And we did that, but I quickly found out that we were way underleveled, especially against Infernape, so we leveled up significantly. Oh, and remember how I was struggling with learning moves? Apparently, Glaceon can learn Water Pulse. Didn't know that was a thing, but now we have the perfect move against those pesky Fire-type Pokémon. Now, if only we could find a move that could fight against Water Types, we would be golden. I know that it can learn Shadow Ball, but I don't think I even knew where it was. Sure, I could have googled it, but I feel like people like to see these types of videos and all the mistakes that people can make in them. Anyways, we won our battle against Leaf. Almost immediately after defeating the rival, we can go up against Gym Leader Rourke's dad, Byron. If the name didn't spell it out for you, he specializes in Steel-type Pokémon, starting with Magneton first. The only neutral move I have against it was Water Pulse, and we got the small chance of confusion, and it even hit himself. Thankfully, we didn't have to suffer through paralysis as we knock it out. Byron then sends out his ace, Bastiodon. We went for Water Pulse again, as it went for an Iron Defense. On the next turn, we use Water Pulse again, but we don't knock it out as it hits a weak Stone Edge. Byron heals it after, and we land more than half its HP and damage with Water Pulse and finally knock it out. Last is Steelix, but it didn't stay out long because it drowned in our Water Pulse. This battle earned us the 6th Gym Badge. Honestly, this kind of demonstrates that even though you can have a Pokemon with Immaculate Defense, it does no good if that's the only thing it has going for itself. When we exit the gym, we get rudely interrupted by Leaf, who asks us to go to the library. Once Professor Rowan talks to us about the Pokemon lore, there are multiple explosions and now we are tasked with going to each lake and helping out the lake trio. So, we immediately fly over to Lake Valor, where we run into Commander Saturn. And just to save us some time, we're going to kind of skip over these battles because they don't really offer anything new since they only have a few Pokémon. Getting back to the story, after we defeat the Commander at Lake Valor, we head over to Lake Verity to help out Dawn. Once that part is done, we trek towards Route 216 and 217, and we make our way towards Snowpoint City because we need the Gym Badge in order to use Rock Climb to get to Lake Acuity. Once we solve the puzzle to the Snowpoint City Gym, we can jump right into battling Candace. Or more like, Candace Gym get any easier. <laughs> Anyways, even though these Pokemon are Ice types like Leader Wake, some of her Pokemon don't resist our Ice typing, which makes it so much easier. And once she switches out Sneasel for Obama Snow, Snow Warning is set up. Snow Warning sets up Hell, which in turn makes our Blizzard hit all of the time. This means we now have a move with 120 base power and no accuracy check. What that means for us is that we can beat Obama Snow fairly easily. And even the Piloswine for that matter. And even when Frostlast comes out and uses Double Team, we can bypass that accuracy check. I know I should have had Shadow Ball at this point, but I had no idea what I was thinking. Lucky for us, that doesn't really matter since we won our 7th Gym Badge and can move on to Lake Acuity where we find out that Leaf has just been beaten. With Leaf's defeat, we can venture into Velstone's one and only Galactic Headquarters to find out that Cyrus is a pretty good public speaker. And if we traverse through this big maze that I've done several, several times, we can enter into his private office where we can battle him. He doesn't really have a whole lot to offer at this time because he only has three Pokemon. We did kind of struggle against this team, but only slightly. Like I mentioned before, Glaceon is incredibly slow and its HP is pretty low, so we can't really survive more than just a few hits here and there. But we managed to get through and defeat Cyrus, so that's a plus, right? Once we beat him, we fight Commander Saturn again, but we wipe the floor with his Pokemon. After that, we set the Lake Trio free and now it's on to the longest part of our journey, arriving to the summit of Mount Coronet. 
It's not particularly difficult by any means, but it just takes a while. And what takes even longer is making our way to fight Cyrus at the end of the distortion world because it takes me 20 in real time minutes to get through, even at 4 times speed. Anyways, when we arrive to the summit, we enter into a double battle against commanders Jupiter and Mars. In other words, you know, I never really noticed this. Is this a Frank Sinatra reference? Getting back to the battle, you might have noticed that I now have Shadow Ball. Now, it may not seem like a whole lot now. It's going to benefit us so much in the long run. Even against these Bronzor, you can see that we do a ton of damage considering it's neutrally effective towards them, even with the light screen up. See, my strategy with this battle is to at least knock out one of the Bronzor, but if I can get both, I'm golden. Eventually, we do just that, then the Pure Ugly comes out. Somehow, the rival is actually being pretty effective in this battle because he just paralyzed Pure Ugly, which is a major advantage. And when the screens were off, we start doing a ton of damage with Blizzard, and we just start sweeping everything. It helps that they have a gold bet at the rear of the team, that way it can be a one hit no matter what. And with the victory over both commanders, we get to hunt down Cyrus in the distortion world. Like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty crazy just how long it takes me. And to be honest, you would think that I would have a path memorized, but every day is a brand new adventure for me, and I completely forget the route every single time. But even with the time it takes to get through this area, I don't think it would really matter to have a path memorized because I would probably just take as long getting there because sometimes I do get lucky and follow the correct path the first time. Eventually, we do make it to Cyrus and we do get to battle him. So this is my attempt at level 56. He sends out Houndoom first, being 11 levels higher gives us an advantage that we can consistently knock it out with the Water Pulse. However, when the Honchkrow comes out, I accidentally misclicked and chose Water Pulse. Luckily, it confused it, but it bypassed it and landed a Heat Wave for almost half our HP. The following turn, we knock it out with an Icy Wind. When Gyarados comes out, all we do is hit a Blizzard here, maybe an Ice Wind, and then another Blizzard, and we get the knockout. But we're at 40 HP, and he still has a Pokemon left that definitely outspeeds us. After a fake out and a night slash, we weren't left with much HP to even hit Weavile once, so we're going to have to be at a much higher level than what we are right now. Sadly, after multiple attempts, we have this run at level 63 where we actually pull through. It took us 7 more levels to manage through his team. I can't believe that we were just getting walled so much. If it wasn't a poison status, it was a burn status, and if it wasn't either one of those, we just took too much damage because our attacks never hit. This kind of goes back to my theory about why it doesn't matter if you excel at one stat when you get walled by Pokemon that are much more diverse than that of the Pokemon we're running with. Even so, at level 63, we had the HP, we had the physical defense, we had the special defense, and most importantly, we had the speed. Either way, we made it through this section, and now we can move on to the last 7 battles of this run. With the demise of Cyrus, we get up and go to Sunny Shore City where we run into Elite 4 member Flint. He wants us to bring the fiery embers of Volkner back to life, and do that we must. At level 65, we tried to battle him, and this goes south very quickly. Electric types probably have the highest speed stat of any Pokemon, and this remains true even here because even though his Jolteon is 19 levels below us, we get outsped, and as if it weren't slow enough, now we're paralyzed and our speed is cut in half. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that we were definitely not going to advance anywhere, especially with all of those super effective moves that he taught his Pokemon. Couple that with the turns we were paralyzed, and it's a recipe for disaster. On our second attempt, I gave Glaceon the Cherry Berry, and this time it's much better. Jolteon still outspeeds, but he goes for Iron Tail instead, and we knock it out with an Ice Beam. Same goes for Raichu, and Luxray, and maybe Electivire? Yes! Okay, we beat him. That was all we needed. Just a run where we didn't get paralyzed. That's crazy that happened, and it only took us two attempts. We've just gotten our 8th gym badge, so this means that we can go all the way through to Victory Road and meet the final 6 trainers. Once we made our way through the maze that is Victory Road, we entered the Pokemon League and after healing and depositing the rest of our team, we can trigger the battle against the rival for the final time. At this point, we're way higher in regards to levels than I care to admit. At level 69, nice, we jump into the battle. As always, Staraptor is first. Even with our terrible speed, we outspeed the Staraptor and knock it out with a single Ice Beam. So this is a good start. Second is Infernape, and it outspeeds and uses Shadow Claw, but we're in a movable physical wall. On the contrary, we use one Water Pulse and knock it out. Heracross is third, and all it takes is a single Ice Beam to do it in. Fourth is Floatzel, and after a couple of Brick Breaks, we manage to get the knockout. Fifth is Snorlax. Even though we outspeed, it's just too bulky and has too much HP as it survives an Ice Beam encounters with the Body Slam that drops us down to 40 HP. 
Thankfully, we subdue it on the next turn. And finally, Roserade is last. We definitely outspeed, and the single Ice Beam knocks it out and wins us the final rival battle. I just wish we were at a much lower level to indulge in the victory. Alright, this is where things get quite interesting. So with Leafeon, we had Sword Stance to powerhouse our way through with sheer physical girth, but Glaceon really has nothing. The only thing it has is its incredible special attack and high defense. Nothing to raise the special attack though. Anyways, against Eren, the only real threats are Scissor and even Drapion. Scizor because we don't really have any good moves against it, but two water pulses were all it took. Heracross isn't considered in this because it just goes down to a single Ice Beam just like Vespiquen. However, Drapion outspeeds and uses Cross Poison and manages to poison us. Thankfully, that wasn't an issue as a single Blizzard sent it to the Shadow Realm. Bertha is next in line, and honestly, she doesn't really stand a chance. Considering her Pokemon are part ground and ice type moves are super effective against them, this should be a cakewalk. No matter what she really sends out, we have a good answer for her Pokemon. The Whiskash doesn't stand a chance against an Ice Beam, the Golem and Rhyperior both go down to a Water Pulse, and then Gliscor is 4 times weak against Ice Beam, and all that leaves us in Powdown. And even that doesn't stand a chance against Ice Beam, so we got a pretty easy victory there. This is where things get really hot. We're up against Flint. He really isn't going to show us any mercy, even though we're almost 20 levels apart from his Pokemon. Against the Houndoom, it should always faint to a Water Pulse. Now, Flareon on the other hand, that thing has great special defense, and it's crazy that it survived the Water Pulse and inflicted us with a burn with Will-O-Wisp. Hopefully this doesn't become an issue as we knock it out on the following turn. His third Pokemon is Rapidash, and while it outspeeds, I don't think that it sees a good knockout move, so he charges up Solar Beam as we knock it out with the Water Pulse. Fourth is Infernape. Just to give you a reference on how bulky we are, we just got out sped and survived the Flare Blitz from an Infernape and we knocked it out with the Water Pulse on the follow up, but then we ultimately got knocked out. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens on the next run. So he sends out Houndoom and we already know it's going to be a one hit KO with Water Pulse and... Oh, it's a range. Yeah, we don't survive to anything, so I'm going to go ahead and restart once I lose because we will ultimately get outsped. Third time's the charm, right? <laughs> well, yes, but actually no. See, it took me several more attempts that I had to use some of the rare candies I had in order to be him. Remember how that water pulse against Houndoom was a range? That proved to be true for a few levels, and I found that out the hard way. So I did what anyone else would do. I taught Rain Dance to Vaporeon. I mean, Glaceon. Somehow we get the knockout during a sunny day turn, and when Flareon comes out, we set it up again and tank a nasty overheat. For those of you that don't know, Rain Dance halves the damage output of fire moves and increases water type moves by 50%, so we never have to worry about it being a range after that. And yeah, this may have been the solution to the temporary problem, but I should have tried it out even on lower levels. We are finally at the second to last battle. This time, we're going up against Lucian, the Psychic-type user. At this point in the run, I'm glad I never had to get rid of Shadow Ball, and why would I? I chose to get rid of Blizzard of all things, but I think it was worth it. Anyways, against this Pokemon, they go down relatively easy against us. We only struggle a little bit when it comes to Bronzong and Gallade. Thankfully, Gallade missed a super effective Stone Edge. That's why we call it Stone Miss, but then Alakazam hit a devastating Focus Blast that brought us down to 40 HP. Once we knocked it out, Espeon was last and it outsped and used Shadow Ball, bringing us down to just the skin of our teeth at 4 HP. We retaliate with the single Shadow Ball and that's enough to win us the battle. That was a pretty close one. Last but not least, she's been revered as the greatest, it's Cynthia. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it took me two tries to beat her and I'm not even kidding when I say that this went way better than what I had imagined. So she sends out Spiritomb first, and it immediately gets taken down by an Ice Beam. Second is Lucario, and we go for Shadow Ball to get it in range for our next attack as it lands an Aura Sphere for over half our health. On the next turn, we retaliate with a Water Pulse and get the Knockout. Third is Togekiss, and it goes down to an Ice Beam. Fourth is Garchomp, and then outspeeds us and goes for a Flamethrower. And we're left with just 1 HP! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy! Okay, we knocked it out. Milotic is 5th, and the only chance we have to keep going on is a freeze. And we got the 10% freeze! Oh my gosh! The RNG gods are on our side. Thankfully, it didn't thaw out, and we got it to a range where Cynthia didn't use a full restore. And finally, last is Roserade, who goes down to an Ice Beam, winning us the battle and the title of champion for Pokemon Platinum version. I've completed the challenge, but how did I do overall? 
beating this at level 75, I think there are a ton of areas for improvement. Mainly if I had planned out the battles, maybe even the path, and even the moveset for what was accessible for each point in the game, I would have done much better, but it didn't help that we had a speed deficient nature to our already bad speed. Maybe if we had been timid or even modest, we wouldn't have fared so bad. But we won't get to see this run for a long while. Our next videos are going to be over Espeon and Umbreon. I'm currently in school and working full time, so hopefully I can make this happen over a week where I have nothing to do. That way I can get these videos out to you all. Anyways, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a like, comment, and please sub to the channel. It definitely helps us out with the algorithm. With that being said, I hope that everyone has a nice day and I'll catch y'all in the next one.